What's up, y'all? It's your boy Jail to play back with another video. Today, we're gonna break down a new episode of Power called Sex Week Season 1, Episode 7. We're gonna tell y'all what happened and what possibly could happen next episode. All right, y'all, let's get it. The episode starts off with Kane and a GCG gang robbing a church. Yes, this is a GCG gang. You remember Lil Guap, the one Kane beat the mess out of? Apparently, they got cool, I guess, so now they're robbing the church together. As you can see, that is Lil Guap, the one with the diamond mask on and with the red jacket. With that being said, how low down do you have to be to rob a church? They robbed the church for the collection money. With that being said, the Robbie kind of go by smooth, but it does come back in Kanan's appearance later on. So Jabari peace Miss Curry talking to Tyreek, and Miss Curry puts her arm on Tyreek's hand. So now Jabari thinks that they might got something going on. Remember Jabari is just a lame dude that has no holes, so he kind of suspicious and kind of still jealous because uh, she don't she don't like him no more. They used to have something going on too, so now he go in front of her. She doesn't tell him anything. Remember, this is the same lady that's sleeping with Ziggy too, so hopefully they don't find that out. So Monet goes ahead and calls the rig and say that the dress gonna come in a little bit late. He kind of tells her that she kind of need to hurry up. So what that means is that she goes ahead and tells Drew and Diana that the drop coming. And they recommend that she goes with Kane. She act like she don't really need Kane because what could possibly go wrong if she doesn't have Kane making a drop? She goes ahead and calls Lorenzo and asks Lorenzo, has she seen Kane? He said, yeah, Kane did come and have a visit, whatever. With that being said, Diana goes out and finds Kane. Kane at his girlhouse just chilling and she convinces him to come to the drop and he said, all right, bet. So Saxon Davis McLean has another conversation about plotting on Tyreek and Sax actually brings up three good people that could come to court to come testify, which is Tommy's mom, Elise Marie, Proctor's daughter. I actually do kind of hope she come back because she has a really good character. And Q, y'all remember Q, Tata's last love interest. So with that being said, he actually comes out with one good person that actually could come back, which is Paz, y'all remember Angela's sister. All right, so meanwhile, Tasha go ahead and call Tyreek and tell Tyreek not to come to the next court hearing because his name did get brought up last court hearing I mean, just for his safety. Right after that, him and Brayden have a conversation about Riley because Riley keep coming inside the room trying to be nosy. He goes ahead and tell Riley not to come back no more. And Brayden was like, all right, bet. So with that being said, after that, Monette has a conversation with Drew and Diane about uh, the last time they went to go see Lorenzo because Lorenzo actually went ahead and had told Monette about what happened last time. Came when they had to go ahead and have see her. I feel like Lorenzo did do the right thing by uh, doing what he did, but he kind of went a little bit too hard. But Monette actually had kind of got mad because she kind of do low key kind of want him for the job because she kind of do need him, but she trying to act tough about it at the same time. After that, already said how Diana went ahead and had talked to Kane, told him to come to the drop. So right after that, we cut to Zeke and Miss Carrie over here clapping cheeks. Right after that, Zeke go ahead and asked her, can she come meet his aunt Monette? How would y'all feel about that Monette as you find out about her? Anyway, with that being said, I think it is kind of a little bit too early for all that. Plus, they don't need to get exposed. With that being said, she kind of says no. Then right after that, he goes ahead and take a shower. Stupid ass Jabari always want to come out and ruin some shit. He goes ahead and kind of like talks to her and try to get back in the groove with her. But she goes ahead and had cut him off. But then he sees the TV, sees the little notebooks and all that. He kind of realizes, oh, damn, she is messing with a student. And y'all remember at earlier, he thought she might mess with Therese. So now he is for sure, for sure that she's messing with Therese. But really, it's, it's really Zeke. So he gets mad because he ain't got no holes and go ahead and sit inside his car and turns up the note that was made for Tyreek and goes ahead and write. A uh, professor at Stanford is sleeping with a student just to make Tyreek mad because it was part of a class project. But remember, towards his knowledge, he thinks that is it is Tyreek that's sleeping with the teacher. So Lauren and Tyreek are in there discussing the class project. And they start flirting with each other and then they get on the bed and Lauren gets on top of Tyreek and they're just laughing together. And then Lauren's boyfriend comes in and taking pictures of them. And then her and Lauren get to fussing so Tyreek goes in and leaves. So after that, Tyreek leaves and he just happened to see Riley walking and he decides to follow Riley. Riley's in court for a marijuana charge. With that being said, she's waiting for her uncle slash lawyer. So Tyreek is waiting and then Sax ends up walking in. And Sax turns out to be her uncle and towards Tyreek eyes. He just not found that out. So let's see how Tyreek goes about this. He didn't tell Brandon about this for the rest of the episode. But let's see how he goes about this, though. So Tyreek texts Brandon and tells Brandon to come back to the house. Then Tyreek sits Brandon down and tells Brandon about that one night on his birthday. Y'all remember when Riley put the pills inside Tyreek drink and Tyreek was kind of drunk and kind of passing out? Towards Tyreek's knowledge, he thinks that Riley tried to sleep with him. Cause that's what Brayden's brother told him earlier. So he goes ahead and try to be like a real friend and goes ahead and tell Brayden. But Brayden gets mad. He thinks that he just plain don't like Riley. Which that is true. Riley do gotta go. But he just mad because he know that he don't like Riley. And they get into a little argument and Brayden walks out. So now we back at the court scene and Sax brings in pause and made it seem like Tasha was really the bad guy. And Tasha and Tommy had something to do with killing Angela. So now Tasha looks even more bad during the case. 
But Davis went ahead and had turned that around. So now it do look like she got a good chance at beating this case. Y'all remember the robbery from earlier? Well, Kane ended up getting spotted at that scene. And Kane ended up getting arrested for that. Just when they was getting ready to make the drop. So now Diana and Monette need Kane to hurry up and call. Because they about to make a drop. Tariq ended up chasing Diana. To ask him about the product. So Diana go ahead and tell Tariq to come on. While that's going on, Brady ended up seeing his brother in school. And his brother ended up telling him, yeah, that Tariq was not lying about that. He even had soul with his own eyes. So Tyreek came by, and now him and Diana just downstairs talking while Monette is upstairs making a drop. She actually goes to Tyreek's stuff and sees the note that the professor wrote for him. Kane is in jail, and he's trying to make a phone call, trying to figure out who he going to call. He calls, but they don't pick up, so now he calls that one Mexican cop dude, and he actually do come in through a clutch. Meanwhile, Monette ends up getting into a fight with the dude that she's supposed to be making a drop with. And then Tyreek and Diana end up hearing it, so Tyreek rushes upstairs and stops it. But as soon as the dude turn around, Monette turn around and pull out her gun and had shot the dude. And yes, this is the first body that we see Monette get so far. And then so Brayden goes to Riley house, and long story short, Brayden ends up breaking up with Riley. So we don't know if she can have any more chances of getting even more evidence on Tyreek. Tyreek volunteers to help move the dead body with Drew. So what they gonna do is make it seem like the dude had got shot through the glass and got robbed. So Drew tells Tyreek, Tyreek to hold up the body so he can shoot the body. Tyreek says, nah, let me do it. Drew says, nah, you ain't never shot nobody before, have you? Tyreek stands there in silence. He didn't say anything. Yes, we all know Tyreek got bodies, but I'm actually glad he didn't say anything. So then Drew goes ahead and shoot the body through the glass, and all the blood spatters all on Tyreek. So Kane talks to Officer Ramirez, basically telling him that Monet doesn't need him, and Monet doesn't need Kane either. So, and he says, why? He says, because of Tyreek. He said that they need to do something about Tyreek. So next episode, what y'all think they might do to Tyreek? Y'all think they might mess around and try to kill him? So they went back to the house to tell Monet everything that had went down, and... Monette told them what had happened with the dude and all that, and Kane offered to go help. Monette said everything is already handled. So the officer asked, is there any, anything that he can do? And she was like, everything is handled. So now it's in both of their minds for sure, for sure, that they really don't need him. And then Monette asked what happened to Kane's face. She asked him that a cop did it. He said no and with a migrant and had walked off. So I guess she now remembers that, yeah, it must have been Lorenzo. So she goes ahead and calls Lorenzo and told him about it. And Lorenzo was like, I'm just doing you a favor, just trying to keep these kids in check. Now she really think that Kane is out of her control. The kids are being out of her control. Kane is really off of her control as of right now, for real. So Lauren goes to Tyreek's room to try to go smash. But y'all remember, he has to hide that blood that's on his shirt from earlier. So he makes up a random excuse not to do nothing. And they get into a little argument and she goes ahead and leave. So Brayden comes back to the house and tells Tyreek how he broke up with Riley and they make up. So now they back to being cool. So then Paz goes to visit Tasha in jail and asks Tasha, was that just a lie about her getting the money from the will? Because I remember when Ghost had died, Ghost left a will in Paz's name, gave her all that money. So then Tasha went ahead and had said no, but then Paz went ahead and had had a deep conversation with her, saying that she needs to go ahead and come forward and tell the truth because she is a mother that does have kids. So what y'all think Tasha might be thinking about doing now? What y'all think might happen next episode? I already know y'all went ahead and had seen a new trailer. Y'all go ahead and leave a comment below and hit me up or any questions y'all want because I will be texting y'all back and answering y'all questions. Y'all hit that subscribe button and like and share the video. All right, y'all. Peace.